Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the BAM Preferred Credit Fund webinar. With me, I've got Tony Landa, our Chief Investment Officer. Him and I are going to be talking about some of the details, the benefits, the solutions provided by our Preferred Credit Fund. Here is our standard cautionary note. I think it's best to pause this screen and read it if you like. One, two points you want to get across. Make sure to use your trusted advisors to help you go through the offering memorandum, uh, the PPM, the operating agreements, all downloadable via our investor webinar at bamcapital.com. Fancy picture of me and Tony there, and like you were saying before the- Two attractive the, fellas. <laughs> and before the film started rolling, we're actually wearing the jackets in the picture. Total coincidence, I promise. A little bit more about BAM. If you don't know us, we've been at this thing now since 2010. Here's some great information about our track record, how many apartments we've transacted so far, a little bit there about our, our past returns and how much we have distributed to date, as well as some of our favorite bullet points about BAM. And just so can I add to this? Yeah. So our returns, our IRR of 35.14%, equity multiple of 2.58. Those are development type returns yeah. with every risk category. And we're buying class A institutional quality, stabilized assets with a small value add component. So that's an impressive statistic for our firm. I, I would agree. What Tony's saying there is typically when investors are, are able to achieve these sorts of returns with sponsors like us, they're typically investing in a development project uh, much more speculative in nature, uh, but typically carries a higher return on investment if executed well. Uh, in this case, we've been able to achieve those returns by buying existing assets using our proprietary methods to enhance value. So here is an executive summary of the Preferred Credit Fund. This is different than some of the uh, products, some of the strategies we've used before. And here to run through the executive summary, Tony. So the goal here is designed for investors seeking an above average risk adjusted yield while maintaining a low risk profile. Our target returns are 10 to 12 percent. We pay out an 8 percent per annual preferred return that's distributed monthly. The strategy is to provide two products, B notes and preferred equity, which is a more secure position in the real estate capital stack. F flexible product mix. The fund has the ability to shift allocation percentages between preferred equity and debt instruments depending on the interest rate environment and market conditions. Perfect. So what did Tony just say here? We don't let him out of the laboratory too much. So to slim that down or to maybe dumb it down a little bit, it's pretty simple. We've never done this before, but we're offering a piece of the capital stack, which is debt and equity combined, we're taking part of the debt. These are first lien mortgages backed by institutional multifamily. And the preferred equity piece that we've been raising here at BAM since 2020, we're combining that in a fund structure so that investors that are seeking yield and maybe monthly distributions or compounding, we'll talk about that here in a second, can achieve that return objective and also at the same time offer more safety than we've ever offered before by, by this mix of debt and equity inside the investment fund. And the flexible product mix, what that means is, depending on market conditions, we can add more debt, invest in more debt and less preferred equity. Interest rates go up, maybe our, our allocation of debt goes down and our preferred equity goes up. Basically, it allows us to sort of move with the market to help maximize those returns that we can deliver to our investors. Again, what Tony said, 8% current, meaning if you want monthly distributions of 8%, that's available. And we look for that total return of 10 to 12%. And safety being the key term, as yeah. you said. Yep, our safest product yet, no doubt. So the key differentiators here all go on this one. Tax efficiency, there's not much we're going to say on a, on a short webinar today. Uh, sign up for the investor account if you haven't already. Go into the deal room, download the documents. This is our most tax efficient strategy yet. Uh, you have to just go into the, the due diligence room to learn more about that. Optionality. I could not be more excited to be able to offer this to our investors. For the first time, we've got redemptions after two years. So that means if you want to take your marbles and go home after two years, 
you can liquidate your position in the fund. And for those investors that have been asking us for longer term vehicles, maybe you don't want your money back if it's continued to compound over time, you'll have the option to stay in it much longer. So this sort of covers two specific types of investors and their desire either for short-term liquidity uh, or for long-term compounding growth. And then as we've said before, the diversification in this sort of large evergreen vehicle, this allows us to invest in ginormous pools of assets. For example, if we were to buy, say, 50 million of debt, that is going to be a piece of the debt. We'll get into it here in a minute. And it'll be spread across thousands of apartments across dozens and dozens of markets. And if I have to add to that, multifamily has consistently outperformed every other real estate asset class um, over time. I've been in the business for 30 plus years. It's always been considered the darling child of real estate among investors. Well said, Tony. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about why preferred equity, why we have that as part of our two strategies inside the fund? Yeah, so preferred equity is, is pretty simple. Sometimes preferred equity is utilized to bridge the gap between common equity and a first mortgage. So it holds a preferred right to payments over common equity. Said another way, it's senior to the common equity. It produces consistent monthly preferred returns with the opportunity for some upside after a sale or a refinance. Right. It protects downside in the event of a sale or liquidation with a more secure position in the capital stack. It offers flexibility. So we can structure these investments with a pay rate or an accrual rate, depending on the opportunity. Yeah. So basically what Tony is saying is that there's different kinds of equity out there. You've got your debt, and then you've typically seen now in, in most assets, the capital stack, the debt and the equity, you're seeing at least two sorts of equity. You're seeing the preferred equity gets paid first. It's in a lower risk position. And then above that is that common equity. And that's, uh, that's another product. That's another strategy we have. And that's where we can get some of those giant outsized returns. Uh, but with that carries some more risk. So in this scenario, we're keeping the safety at a higher level and offering participation in the PREF equity uh, portion of the capital stack, again, spread across thousands of apartments across dozens of markets. Ready to talk debt? Let's talk debt instruments. I'm ready. All right. So B pieces, B notes, whatever you want to call them. It's generally considered the first loss position of a first mortgage. So this investment vehicle produces a consistent and predictable income stream. Right now, it's paying off 650 basis points over SOFR. That's 12% money. That's yeah. where I want to put my money. It's secured with a first mortgage. So what, what Tony just said is if we were to go buy that debt today, that debt is currently paying 12%, and that would be distributed back to the fund every month. Yes. And so the first mortgage to a borrower, it's one blended rate. But the first mortgage is carved up in tranches, and I don't want to get too technical now. Please don't, Tony. Okay, I won't. I won't. <laughs> but the point is, 12% on the first loss position is a very attractive investment from where you are in the capital stack. It's secured with a mortgage on the real estate, multifamily real estate. It outperforms every asset class consistently. It minimizes investment risk by diversifying the fund with a combination of B-piece debt and preferred equity investments. Gets back to the point of what Ivan said, diversification. Offers investors a 34, 30 to 40% cushion to loss, which means the value of the investment for multifamily has to decrease by 30 to 40 to 50% in order for you to lose money. So, yeah, a lot to unpack there. I think you did a, a great job, Tony, with, with explaining that. Again, we are taking a portion of the first mortgage of thousands of apartments, and we're buying a tranche or a portion of it and combining that with preferred equity to maximize returns. And I, I can't stress enough the, the safety that, uh, that Tony's referred to in these instruments. Again, with the, uh, with the debt portion of that, you would have to see 30 to 40% losses or uh, devaluation in the underlying assets uh, for the investor to have any capital at risk. And I think it's worth pointing out that these 
debt tranches that we're buying now aren't 2022, 2023 tranches. These are going to be newly underwritten 2024, 25 and beyond tranches of debt that are being underwritten to today's standards. And if I can add to that, so I've, I'm an old man. I consider myself an old man. I would too. <laughs> and I've been in real estate for more than 30 years. I've seen a number of real estate bad cycles, and I've never seen multifamily devalued by 30 to 40%, even during the great financial crisis or the dot-com bubble. Yeah, maybe in a few extreme circumstances, but overall the market in general. Yes. Which I think leads to this next slide about uh, non-performing loans or the amount of loans that go bad uh, across several categories here. Yeah, so the national media likes to categorize commercial with multifamily. Multifamily is a completely different animal. And this slide will tell you one thing. So for all bank debt, if you look at all these categories, multifamily residential real estate is 0.32%, 32 bips, the lowest of any category. And so that's bank debt. But if you go to the Mortgage Bankers Association and you look at their statistics, they track Freddie, they track Fannie, they track HUD, they track life insurance companies, they track, they track bank debt. That number is 1.2%, which is the lowest of any real estate asset class. Again, you've heard it here from Tony himself. There's not much more for me to add, but the the instruments that we're investing in, the bank debt, not Freddie debt, not Fannie, not LifeCo or HUD, uh, currently a 0.32 uh, default rate, which is well within uh, the parameters that we need to feel uh, sufficiently protected from any downside. Lastly, the due diligence process. I'll let Tony talk most about this, but what excites me is you have several levels of underwriting here before we decide to buy that big tranche of debt. Yeah, so you have three experienced underwriters, right? You have the originating lender, you have Freddie Mac, and you have BAM, all seasoned real estate veterans. I think you've got a little bit on here about the uh, the originating lender whose name we, we won't divulge at this time, but no, a little bit about their stats. They definitely have $25 billion in AUM of multifamily assets across the country. Um, very experienced. Um, They've been doing it for 40 years. Yes. And so not only that, is that BAM Capital is a experienced owner, operator, and underwriter. I mean, we know real estate. We yeah. know multifamily. We're not good at a lot of things. We are great at one thing, and that's multifamily real estate. And so looking at real estate or looking at the investment, you always have to think about the sponsor, and the sponsor is there. It's arguably is equally important as the actual real estate. I couldn't um, agree more. And the we, Freddie Mac on here might confuse a couple people because we just said you know, we're not looking at Freddie Mac debt. Freddie Mac actually also buys bank debt. So these are underwritten to Freddie Mac's standards uh, that they have in place for when they buy this debt from banks. We're not the only ones that buy this type of debt. This debt is usually purchased by large endowments, pension funds, giant investors, allocators of capital, as well as as uh, GSEs like Freddie Mac. Guys, that's pretty much it. You've got the contact information here. Call our team, go online, sign up for an investor account to access the deal room to learn more. Um, we'd love to, to show you what we can do here on this new preferred credit fund. Again, I am here giving this webinar. I haven't done one in a while because I am truly excited to offer our investors what they've been looking for and asking for, which is more yield, more safety, and optionality for short and long-term investments. Thank you.